So Om Shanti and good evening. And today's talk, the title is Set Boundaries and Take Back Control. So today evening we have a special speaker, Arul Shah, and she's been a practitioner of Raj Yoga meditation and teacher for the past 40 years. And not only that, she's also working as an IT consultant and a life coach. So a wealth of experience here with this evening, all of us. But at the same time, what also drew me from the leaflet was her deep belief that spirituality comes first in her priority and the basis of how her life unfolds. And so she does a lot of activities for the BKs in London, but also around the UK and very connected to the world too. So I invite Harul Shah. Thank you. Hello, and can you hear me? Not echoing. Okay, that feels like it's in my face, so that's okay. So, setting boundaries. What are boundaries? And, and before we explore the subject, um, which I've had a lovely time thinking about, and looking at my own life. Um, let's welcome everyone who is online as well, and a big welcome to all of you here too. And um, let's just take a moment to just sit for a moment. And we've probably had a long day, a busy day, lots of things that have been happening. So in this moment, if you want to close your eyes, do, and just become present and take a few deep breaths. So just breathing in and focusing and concentrating on your breathing and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And as you do this a few more times, think about the things that have happened through the day that have caused some sort of disturbance or didn't live a good feeling and let go for now. So as you breathe out, let go of those, um, of that heaviness. So breathing in, and I breathe in lightness and peace, and I let go of that which is no longer needed. Once more, breathing in peace, and breathing out that which is not necessary. Okay, open your eyes if they're closed. And it's lovely to be here. Um, and we will have a couple of exercises or at least one exercise in between. So I will ask you to get some pen and paper and they have some here if you don't. Um, so let's think about Boundaries. What sort of boundaries are there in the world that is around us? And sometimes, you know, when I was thinking about boundaries, the obvious thing that sort of comes in our mind is some way that there is a separation. You know, you are saying this is this and that is that. 
right? That is what a boundary does. Whether it's the boundary on the middle of the road which says the cars on this side are driving this way and the cars on this side are driving this way. Sometimes on the road there is um, quite a few big kind of, uh, I don't know whether you'd, a central reservation, that's what the name is. <laughs> and sometimes it's just a dotted line on the road. So, you know, and when it's the dotted line, you can sort of go to the right and come back in. But when it's the central reservation, you can't do that. It's a very strong boundary, right? Um, and if we think about uh, homes and gardens and people have sort of uh, uh, boundaries saying this belongs to this place and this belongs to that place, that's not allowed in and that's not allowed out. And sometimes, the, I remember when we first moved into our home, um, the, the sort of boundary, as we might call it, or the fence, another name for it, between us and the house on the next to us was just like those clear green meshes. And um, um, if you think about the chicken wire kind of mesh, so nothing, you know, not it, it, you could see everything on the other side, they could see everything on our side, and it wasn't very high, but it was just a little mesh, um, green uh, kind of uh, wire mesh. Um, and then we had some new neighbors come in and they put in a proper fence. And then I was looking on the other side of the houses and at one point um, there was a big hedge and then at another point there was a big black tall fence. You really couldn't see what was happening on the other side. So lots and lots of different kinds of boundaries. Right. So why am I talking about boundaries and why am I sort of giving you um, a vision of the kind of boundaries that they could be? And, and are boundaries necessary? So yes, I would say boundaries are useful because what do they do in terms of roads? And I think I'm very hot here. <laughs> What, what happens? What happens when we have boundaries on roads? What? How does it protect us? That's okay. How does it protect us from getting hurt? So, it protects us from accidents, right? Yeah. So boundaries are necessary because they protect us from accidents. They make things clearer, right? And, and so in our life, too, boundaries are really important. And, and there are some boundaries that we create to protect ourselves. And, and rightly or wrongly, those boundaries are, uh, uh, you know, sometimes good for us, but sometimes uh, they cut us off from what's happening on the other side. Does that make sense? So it's like, thank you. <laughs> so sometimes they make us, um, they protect us from what's happening on the other side and keeps us safe. But on the other hand, sometimes we create walls and we think we're creating these walls as a safety mechanism to save ourselves. But what we're doing really is cutting ourselves off from the joy and happiness that is out there. So it's really a fine line um, to understand the kind of boundaries we've created and whether they're useful or not. So what are some of the kind of boundaries you may have? And then I'm gonna share a few that I have and how they've helped me. But before I do that, let me just ask here, what kind of boundaries do you think you may have or you know you have? Anyone? I know on YouTube they might be putting stuff in the chat and that's okay. Yes. Thank you. So I find it hard to just say no to people. So if anyone comes like for advice or needs help or they're in a situation, 
even though it will have an effect on me mentally and physically, I can't say no. And that's something that I'm aware of and in the process of working on, but it can be challenging because it plays on your mind that I could have done this, I could have done that, but I also have to look out for myself because I am important and I come first. That's exactly right. Yeah. So it's like helping others, but what about helping yourself yeah. too? And, and where is that line? Absolutely. Yes. Um, and, and so boundaries are, it's like a um, compass as well. Um, so let me, share about my, I, I, let me share about my example, and hopefully that will make it clearer for others too. So I remember um, I, was, um, I was about 18 years old, and I'd gone through, you know, I'd traveled back home. I was from Kenya, and I had, we'd come here. I hadn't gone back. And so I went back after four years, and um, um, I, was, um, at, I was practicing spirituality at, uh, even then. So we'd started quite young, my mom, my sister, myself. Um, and so I was also going to the center in uh, Kenya. And uh, I was also visiting friends, family, all of that. And on the journey back, um, I realized that really this spiritual path is very important to me. And that was me, right? Everyone has their own um, journey. And so I felt this was really important to me. And there were a few things that would support me on this journey. And I made a very clear choice in my life that this is what I want to do. And it became like a, like a clear decision, like a boundary, that this is what I want in my life. And so if this is what I want in my life, I won't do this, but I will do this. So it's like very clear. What am I? In other words, boundaries are like, the question, uh, help us to answer the question, if I want whatever it is that I want in my life, what am I saying yes to and what am I saying no to? So it became very clear to me that this is what I'm saying yes to and this is what I'm saying no to, right? And, and so, um, and, and a recent, uh, a couple of recent examples. Um, so uh, there's a friend of mine, and um, well, you know how it's all about what's going on in our mind. And so I'd had a little misunderstanding, and she's, you know, we've both had a little bit of a, I wouldn't say. Uh, argument or anything. I don't think we said anything, but I think it was like just uh, unspoken, undone, and it was like there was a feeling in both our minds that we'd not had an opportunity to talk about. Um, and so when that happens, what it does, it's like our heart creates like a barrier, and, and it's like the hurt, right? We feel the hurt, we feel... Um, not good, and so we create a barrier and we stop the love from flowing. Does that make sense? It's like the, the, just something small that maybe becomes a little bit big, and it's like we, um, so I'm talking about myself, so I was like, you know, she doesn't care, and so I don't, you know, there's nothing. Um, and uh, so the other day, then she asked me um, to borrow one of the one book that she thought I might have. Um, and at that point, I didn't look for the book, and I said, "I'm not sure whether I have it or not." Um, and then I sort of looked, and I saw that I had the book, and I had a choice at that point: Do I just, you know, well, I'm hurt. She doesn't care. Why should I? <laughs> And uh, or do I break the wall? Do I break the barrier? And it's not a big barrier, but it was something I was feeling. And do I just let her know that I have the book and she can come and collect it? 
And, and again, it's that compass, isn't it? What am I saying yes to? What am I saying no to? And I was very aware at that time to just really feel that, yes, my, my uh, what would I call, the center of me is love. The center of me is truth. And, and ultimately, you know, there is love for her. And so I said, I have to call her. Why am I, you know, making life difficult for her? So I called her and I, uh, she came and, you know, and she came in, we had a cup of something or the other, and uh, um, uh, she, she came to pick up the book. And we had a lovely conversation. And, you know, I took the opportunity and we talked about whatever it was that had caused a bit of a misunderstanding. And it all finished. And so just that simple, what am I saying yes to? What am I saying no to? If I had held on to it and, you know, just not bothered, um, I would be making that little kind of rift a huge, big rift. And over time, we keep on making those walls and those barriers bigger and bigger and bigger. Make sense? And so we need to be really clear. And I suppose it starts off from what is it that I want in my life? So what, if I'm saying I'm choosing love, I'm choosing joy, um, I'm, you know, it could be even very practical things like um, someone was saying they, were, they wanted to write a book, but they just didn't have time. They wanted to do something, but they didn't have time. And, and so she then had to think, what am I saying yes to? And what am I saying no to? So if I'm feeling as in I am, I am doing a lot of things which don't really help me to getting that book written, then, you know, am I going to get that book written? So what is it that I want in my life? And then on the basis of that, what do I say yes to? And what do I say no to? One of my friends, um, uh, she actually let me start off with another story, another one of my stories. And um, so my mom, um, flew away, passed away in January. And one of the things that I was very aware of those first couple of months is that um, I need to protect myself. What's, what's going on inside? I just need to protect myself. So this is where we build a wall or we build something to protect ourselves. Um, so I was very clear that um, I was not going to allow thoughts of um, um, sadness or thoughts that would uh, make me uh, upset come in. So, you know, in a way that I, I was going to use understanding that, you know, I know she's a soul, I know she's got a journey, um, I know that she'll always be, you know, like an angel taking care of us and also the gratitude that we feel for everything she's done. But any time any other thought came in, I was very clear what, that I was not going to, um, what you call, play with thoughts that were going to make me feel sad. So I just changed them. I just changed them and just focused on the good things. And they really helped me because at that time we needed to keep everyone strong, the family strong, there was lots to do. Um, and, um, you know, I just needed to be focused. Um, and, and then it was after that, that uh, then the wall needed to come down. And it did in its own way start to come down and the feelings started to come. And, and then it was just in a safe way, looking at those feelings and working with those feelings. But at that time, right at the beginning, I needed to, you know, be very clear what kind of thoughts I was going to entertain 
and what kind of thoughts I was not going to entertain. Um, and so um, a couple of months ago, uh, one of my good friends, her husband passed away. And um, um, again, very, very, very suddenly and was not ill, was not, um, you know, in any way expected. Um, so she'd come around yesterday and we were having a chat and uh, um, one of the things that, that sort of came up as we were having those conversations was, you know, life, you know, like a movie, like a movie, there, is, there are sequels to movies, you know. Um, now I can't think of any, but you know, it's like part one, part two, part three, or um, in that way, you know what I mean by sequels. They run a movie, it's a great movie, and so they decide to do another part of it, <laughs> and they have a sequel to it. Um, and so we were laughing and um, saying that it's a sequel. Um, I remember when I was um, talking about mom at one point, I was sort of saying life whilst mom was there and then life after mom has gone on her journey. So it was reminding me of before Christ and after Christ and so mom being there, mom not being there. And mom and I had a really good relationship. She was a friend, a companion, a, you know, a teacher, a mom, all of that. So we've really had a lovely life together and... So that's why she was coming in our hearts, uh, remembering her with love. And, and so we were laughing, my friend and I were laughing, and we were saying, so there is, um, we, were, we used to go to school together. We were in school and college together, and so we were talking about that time of um, that phase, first phase of our lives, and then her second phase where she was married and she had children and she was doing all sorts of other things. And then now this is the third phase of her life. And so, you know, living that third phase of her life very beautifully too. And so now if you're, she was saying to herself, so that means that in that third phase of my life, I now have to let her husband, Mahindra, I have to let my husband leave his life because she believes in reincarnation, uh, but I have to live my best life. And so within that, again, you know, I'm not going to allow things of the second phase of my life to um, upset things in my third phase. So that's another aspect of boundaries. And, and we use those to say, again, going back to that question, what am I saying yes to? And what am I saying no to? Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and, and finally, I don't know, those who come from a Hindu background would have um, heard of uh, Lakshman Rekha. Right? So uh, for those who are not from a Hindu background, uh, it's the story about Rama and Sita, and um, they're in the jungle, and Rama's brother Lakshman is also there. Um, and I'm not going to make a sort of talk about the whole story, but uh, they just need to leave Sita by herself in the forest whilst they're going to... So, so Rama's gone and Lakshman needs to go and help him, but he doesn't want to leave Sita alone. And so he draws a line around her, and that is the line of protection, a bit like the boundary, a line of protection. And so um, he says to her, uh, Lakshman says to Sita, don't step out of the line. You will be in this circle. You will be completely safe. But what happens is things come in a disguise, in a, in, a, in a way that look very golden and beautiful um, to entice us out of that circle. And, and so in the same way, um, Sita was enticed out of that circle and uh, then the whole story of where she was captured by the 
devil. And so for us too, when we have, uh, when we've drawn this line around us to say, these are the things I'm going to do, and these are the things I don't want in my life, I guarantee you <laughs> that you will get lots of little and big tests or pulls to step out of your circle, right? And then that is where we need the willpower, we need the strength. And so before I talk about how do we then, you know, um, keep ourselves safe and how do we keep ourselves strong, how do we keep um, our determination, because how many of us have made uh, promises to ourselves on 1st of January, right? And how many, huh? <laughs> and how long did they last for? A couple of days? A week? Right? Yeah? So, so you've made promises or you've made a resolution on New Year's Day that this year I am going to dot 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 right no you've never done that oh okay right but but you know we will all have decided at some point i'm going to do this and then there are things that will come and we'll say oh, maybe tomorrow maybe just a little bit <laughs> right yes Yes, but, but when we make choices, things will come to test our choices. You wanted to say something? No, okay. So, so um, I, and I know for myself too, it's, I, I will have made, and I have made many choices on New Year's Day or many choices throughout my life, but I, you know, which ones have I really followed through? And, and which ones, you know, have had that determination and strength um, are the ones that I've really wanted. And so before we talk about how we keep that strength, that determination, um, I'd like you to think about maybe something that you want in your life. Something, and I'm not talking about physical things, you know. I'm not talking about I want more money or I want, um, you know, um, uh, what do you call, yeah, a better job or whatever. And it could be that, but it's really looking a little bit deeper and say, what is it that I want in my life? And what is it? So if, if we maybe just have a few minutes where you look at your life and just think about one thing that you have been looking for in your life. Is the question clear? And there is pens and papers there if you want, if you haven't got, or if you just want to think about them for yourself. Something that, you know, you've been thinking about, you've been looking for, never just out of your reach. It could be, you know, something as simple as, I want peace in my life. Or, I want happier relationships. Maybe pick one particular relationship. Everyone got one in the room? Online too, I hope you're doing the exercise. Anybody want to share? Yeah, it's useful. I think it's really useful and we inspire others and you make it very strong for yourself. If you were to share your one in the gathering, it 
gets that extra energy, that extra boost. Anybody feel like strong enough? Thank you. Thank you. Um, what I want is contentment. So whatever happens, happens, and is happening or will happen, I just want to be stable. Like stability that doesn't shift me, doesn't make me go up, that make me go up or go down. Uh, just stability, contentment. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? There's a mic. No, at the back. Uh, I would say happiness. Just to be happy all the time, and. Uh, that would um, also express love all the time. So that's the main goal, I think. Okay. I think that, was the, that is the purpose for everything. You can succeed everything with happiness and love. Okay. Anyone else? Ah, see, one person becomes brave, everyone else joins in. Great. <laughs> so I would like to grow and excel to my full potential in life. That's something I would like to do. Lovely. Lovely. OK. So now the second question is, think about this, um, this kind of purpose or something that you want in your life. Now for that, what is the one thing you need to say yes to? And what is the one thing that you just need to say no to? Right, so you know your own life. So a bit like the lady who wanted to write the book, she needed to say no to some of the way she was using her time. It wasn't in a wasteful way. It wasn't in a, um, um, it was using it worthwhile in a good way, but it was not giving her time to write the book. So if I want to be happy, if I want to be content, if I want to fulfill the, my purpose, you know, what is it that I need to say yes to for myself? And what is it that I need to say no to? What's coming in the way? And what's going to help me along my journey? Yeah? Anybody want to share? Yeah? What are you going to say yes to? Yes? Uh, wait for the mic. So, yes to self love and no to the negative inner voices. <laughs> negative inner voices. Yeah. Right. So, how are you going to? do that when you have that negative inner voice, what are you going to do? I'm not necessarily going to... Um, so I recognize that I may have dark thoughts, that it's okay, but within me just to change it and to make it more positive. Right. Because as much as I repel my dark thoughts, they're still going to be there. So yeah. I've learned to love my dark thoughts, but still change the script in my mind. Yeah. To stay positive and turn the pain into power. Yeah. Which is what I'm trying to do at the moment. So, yeah. That's lovely, lovely. Some, someone wise once told me, and it really helped me, is you can have that first thought, right? So the first dark thought or the wrong thought or the weak thought, whatever it is, but then and with awareness, stop it there. Don't have the second one following on from it. And that has really helped me. So I sort of resonate with what you're saying there. Thank you. Anyone else? What are you going to say yes to? And what are you going to say no to?
you. So I say yes to spending more time with myself and experimenting with myself. And on the other side, yes, saying no to spending time with the outside rather than myself inside. Okay, so there are things that you're going to say no to in terms of how you spend your time yes. and definitely make time to spend for your, with yourself. Yes. Great. Uh, I'm going to say yes to spirituality and meditation, uh, having that more in my life and uh, no to, again, like becoming awareness of negative thoughts. But I have a question like uh, when you say to stop it, to become aware and stop it, stop it from uh, to the second thought. But sometimes it's very difficult. It's like we are addicted to our thoughts, we are addicted to the negative thoughts. So in your experience, how do you do that? How do you stop it there? How do you become aware? Right. So the next part of this, uh, and it's great you're asking this question, because when we know our purpose, uh, or we know what we want, you know, regardless of the purpose can be quite big, but what is it that I want? and what am I going to say yes to, what am I going to say no to, then it's like, um, then how am I going to have the strength, right, to say yes to something and no to something. Um, and so there are two aspects, and you say you're choosing spirituality, right? So that's what you said. And so as part of spirituality, uh, one of the things that has helped me tremendously is meditation. So meditation is just taking time out where I am connecting or I am talking to myself. So that's one, talking to myself. But I'm also talking to that highest being. So like the sun, you know, the sun, when you're, when you're sitting under the sun, you feel the heat, you feel the light, you feel the strength. And so when the soul, the spirit that I am, spirituality, I'm a spirit, uh, connects to that highest, that spiritual sun, in a sense. And all I need to do is just sit in that light, I get power, I get strength. And, and that helps me, and I get light. So that helps to bring clarity that, you know, what is going on here, and then the strength to be able to say yes and no. So yes, it's not, all, not um, it takes practice because it's a habit that, you know, whatever it is like, you know, whatever we've done, you know, whether it's any kind of addiction, food, whatever addiction it is, um, you know, that's what I'm saying no to, right? It's that, whether it's that thought addicted to dark thoughts or addicted to feeling depressed or low, all of those are just thoughts that just carry on and on. And so it's learning to, I find meditation helps to give me power, give me strength, and it brings that vision, you know, keeps that vision alive in my life that this is what I want, and so every day, this is what I'm choosing. This is what I'm choosing. So what am I doing to stay in that circle of protection? And if I've made a mistake and I've moved out, then just learning, I need to get back in again. And, and realizing, you know, just going back to those New Year resolutions is, um, and I'm talking from my example where I've made those New Year resolutions, it's like, I make the resolution, but if I start not paying attention and I just start breaking it, right, then it's like within a few days I'm not even thinking about it, right? So the power is in keeping it. If I have broken it over time and I just keep on breaking it, then it's really how much do I want it? And if I don't really want something, I'm not going to do anything about it. <laughs> I hope that helps answer the question. So meditation is one thing. Uh, I would say I've, I've found th uh, a couple of other things really useful in my life. Um, so the meditation is one. 
The second is the spiritual study. You know, just just being, just reminding myself of the spiritual principles or reading something spiritual, reading something positive every day. We, we you know, it's like, you th I mean, it's a really nice example about the garden. How many people go out in their garden and plant weeds? Anybody does that? Right? But they appear. Right? No matter, but do the flowers appear by themselves? You know, does the rose bush appear by itself? Right? You have to plant it for it to give you flowers. You have to tend to it. And, and so um, we're living in a world that is filled with negativity. There is, you know, it's not got much strength, much power. So just like the garden here, the weeds will come. So I have to do that gardening every day. Um, and, and so one is the gardening to remove the weeds, but also to plant those roses and those flowers and those uh, uh, whatever it is I want to plant in there. They're not going to come just like that. I've got to plant them. And so that means, that's where I'm saying, some kind of spiritual input every day. Something people talk about is eating the right fresh fruit every day. If you don't, then the body's not going to be very healthy and well and energetic. And so in the same way, feeding my mind good food every day. And when I do this, I am reaffirming what it is that I want in my life. I am reminding myself what it is I want for myself. Right. I don't know whether you've come here before or done any lessons here. One of the things we talk about is traffic control. Right? So we have that those traffic lights out there by the roads, and what do they do? They control the traffic, they control the traffic right? So they, they make things work without accidents, you know, stop the accidents. And so we talk about having traffic control here. How do you do traffic control here? Right. So when those thoughts are coming, when, when, when uh, you know, it's like, and the thoughts are very, very fast, right? And so accidents happen. <laughs> and so every little while, whether it's an hour, whether it's a couple of hours, just becoming still and looking at your thoughts. Maybe reconnecting with what it is that you want reconnecting with your highest self, reconnecting with that highest being. So it's like you are, if I was on the wrong track, I've stopped myself going down that road even more. So yes, there are some walls and some boundaries we need to create and some we need to let go of and break down. What is it that I'm saying yes to and what is it that I'm saying no to for what it is that I want to achieve or get in my life. So sometimes, you know, just you know, before just saying yes or no to something, just take a moment inside and ask yourself, what am I saying yes to? Even simple things like when you get angry and irritated, annoyed, upset, you have the dark thought, what am I saying yes to? And that can be like a little you know, break to just say, am I turning right or am I turning left? So, 
we'll do a little meditation, but before we do that, any questions, any thoughts? Yes? And online too, they can ask on the chat or make a comment on the chat. Earlier you mentioned that we will be presented with choices. Now, the choices we make, does that determine whether we pass or fail the test? Or does failing the test mean we're elevating in some way? Do you, do you know what I mean? So, so I think what you're trying to say is that yes, sometimes we pass, sometimes we fail, but does failing means we failed? Yeah, exactly. Is, that is what the you're garden saying? destroyed? Yes. Or can we still revive the garden? Yes, yes. So what do you think? You know the answer, don't you? It's probably subjective, <laughs> because everyone has their own choices, like you said. Yes. So it's within yourself, I guess, to determine that. Yes, right? yes. And also, you know, it, it's they, it, I, I, have, um, I have sort of life's experience has taught me that nothing is wrong. There's a reason behind it. But I can't use that to be careless. Right, so if I just say, you know, oh, forget it, never mind, let me just continue, and there will be consequences as a result of that. Um, but on the other hand, you know, I can't beat myself up for every mistake I've made and just sort of say, um, you know, really be honest with myself and say, you know, is that, is that the choice I'm making? And if that's okay, then that's what I'm making. But if I don't like the result of those choices, then I need to make a different choice. But definitely, I've always now learned that things that have happened in the past, I cannot change. The only thing I can change is in this moment. And that's what I was very much remembering are regarding that friend of mine where I, you know, do I call her and say, yes, I've got the book, or do I just, you know, ignore it? And I was very much aware that this is the choice that I'm making now. Um, I have one question online, and is what is the easy way where one has been controlled by others and now wants to take control back? Any guidance? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm not sure, um, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's difficult, but what I would say is that, um, you know, you were talking about contentment, but I think one of the things that comes before is self-awareness and self-respect. And it's like, I need to start, when I start to know myself and respect myself. And again, that strength that comes from connecting with the highest self, connecting with God, um, I'm able to sort of say, this is my choice. So um, if I was to say something, um, so my sister and I, uh, we're two siblings, and as we grew up and she was older than me, um, she had her way and I had my way. And I, neither of us were wrong. It was just we were different. And, and I think I felt, and she might say differently, and that's okay, but I felt like um, she was very controlling. It was always her way, and her way was right. <laughs> and, and I think it was like I had... As I got older, I had to discover who I was, become clearer about who I was, and then sort of in a nice way, because I, I definitely wasn't very good at this at the beginning. I was not saying things in a nice way, in a respectful way, but in a nice and respectful way, saying, this is what I'd like to do, and these are my reasons for wanting to do it this way. So I'm not saying you're wrong, but this makes much, this makes it much more clearer and uh, right for me. So it's finding a, my own inner strength, becoming clear about what I want, 
and and also why I want it, but um, sort of respecting the other person and where they're coming from. Um, something recent this weekend I was thinking about was, you know, we have that children's toy where you have a box and it has like a triangle and a circle and a square cut out on the box and then you have the pieces and the triangle can only go in the triangle and the circle can only go in the circle and the square can only go in the square. And what we are is we're all individuals. We're all individuals, and, and if I'm a circle, I want everyone else to be the circle. <laughs> and if you're a triangle, you want everyone else to be a triangle, because you know that that is right and that is the best. And so I think it's a journey of accepting, a journey of knowing who we are, and uh, respecting ourselves and others. Yes. Just wait for the mic. And uh, Namaste, Pranam. I wanted to ask um, my mother. She's 87. I know you just said you lost your mother. My sympathy is with you. My mother is in very good health. She. I have two brothers. One lives in India and one lives in America. So my mom divides her time between India and America. So whenever I'm with her, instead of enjoying my time with her, I think, I always think, is it going to be the last time I see my mother? What if I, I mean, I could be not here, or mom could be not here. How do I live in the moment? And when I'm with my mother, I do say, oh, my name is Minal. Minal, forget it, enjoy now. Mom is sleeping next to you, you know, like you're going out with her, you're going shopping, and all that, but no. I'm, with her, I'm thinking what's going to happen when she's not here. What should I tell my mind at that time that not to do that? Or um, I think you will have the answers for yourself. Something that has helped me, and it's not something I thought about before, but something that's definitely helped me is being grateful. And I really think about, diff when I think of my mom, rather than being sad, I think about all the things that she has brought into my life, so the gratitude. And I try and think of new things that I haven't thought before. And so maybe, you know, and we all know, right? When the, when the child is born, that guarantees that at some point, <laughs> Yeah. You're going to leave and move on. And, and, and um, so, really, um, you need to have that conversation with your mom. See what she says. And say, this is how I feel. What will she say? And on the other hand, the other question to ask is, if your daughter was feeling this way, what would you tell her? Right? So she's the daughter, you're the mom, right? She's feeling this way about losing you. What would you tell her? Yeah, I would say that things of the happier times we had together, reflect back on that. Um, and uh, grateful that we were together, that I, you became my daughter and I'm your mother. Yeah. That's what I say. But uh, it's always a fear that. You know, like. So if your daughter had this fear, what would you tell her? Be strong. Life goes on. <laughs> but it's a journey. And, and one of the things definitely that has helped me is the spiritual teachings here. I don't know whether you've done the meditation course, um, the Raj Yoga meditation course. Have you done that? I think so. Years ago. Okay, so maybe revise that, do that again, because it gave me answers, because we know we're spiritual beings, we're a soul, and each soul goes on its journey, but we meet each other in different ways, in different forms, we're never far away from each other. So it's never a dying. Yeah. So I'm going to spend as much time as I can with my mother. Lovely. 
Lovely. And write it down. Write down your experiences of her. Well, you were saying something? Enjoy the presence. Yeah, yeah. live in the moment. Yeah. 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 But, but it's also asking yourself, what is the fear? What is? The fear. Like fear what would be the life like without her? You know, like, <laughs> how? So what would I you tell your mom? Ma- what, what would you tell your daughter? What would be life like without you? <laughs> okay, so I hope that helps. Yeah, I'll try. Um, and thank you for your honesty. Um, and everyone today, I'm glad that you've shared. Um, so let's do a little meditation. And we'll do this meditation um, connecting to the highest within ourselves and connecting with that highest being. So sit comfortably. If you've got things on your lap, just put them on the side or on the floor so that you're not uh, aware and you know you can relax. Take a deep breath in and out. And if you want to, you can leave your eyes open or and look at that picture. Or just close them and that's fine too. So take a deep breath in. And as you're breathing in, feel as if you're breathing in energy and oxygen and strength. And you're letting go of all the weaknesses of all that is no longer needed. So we'll do this three times. Take a deep breath in. And out. Once again, a deep breath in. And out. Another deep breath in and out. And as I focus on my breathing, my mind becomes still. And I take, I bring the thought to the forefront of what it is that I want in my life whether it is happiness, whether it is peace, whether it is contentment, I bring that thought in to the forefront of my mind. And I see it as a flower, a bud. And as I look at it, I see the flower opening and blossoming and the fragrance of that peace, of that love opening from within me. And what spirituality is saying is that I want peace, I want love, I want to feel content, I want to be happy because That is my innate quality. That is my real nature. It is within me. It's just the journey of life has covered it up with other things and I've forgotten that peace is within me. And so just having the thought, I am a peaceful being, is uncovering that flower bud of peace within us and allowing it to open up. 
I am a peaceful being. And I visualize that spiritual sun shining and radiating its light on me. And that light from that divine being is giving that inner strength and making the flower within open up quicker and grow quicker. That divine light is filled with love, peace, And I sense the encouragement to keep moving forward. I am a peaceful being and continue to share the fragrance of peace. Om. Shanti, I am a peaceful being. So, are we all peaceful now? So thank you, Sister Paro. And the one thing I'm taking away is when I was listening, is beautiful to ask yourself that question. What is it that you're going to say yes to today? And what is it that you're going to say no to? And that's the beginning step to create that boundary. And perhaps that clarity of intellect, and when you keep using it and filling it with, beautiful thoughts and powerful fuel every day, then it empowers. And the more you do it, you become it, right? And so, just a follow-up for next week. The talk title is Dreams, Relationships, and Reality by Shantanu Mandal. So do bring your friends, family, those who are on online. You can also physically come here and thank you for joining us this evening. And we'd like to see more of you, right? And the product for the week, it's about time. It's the time book. So if you go down to the shop, then there it is. You're most welcome to buy it. You're most welcome to share it with your friends and family. It's for self-empowerment, right? So a reference for you and a guide. Thank you very much. And Om Shanti.